Hello, Washington. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I think that's a yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome back for part two of our conversation with Nathaniel Wellen, one of our own Redondo Beach um, students. And I, I apologize. I have to flip the page over here because I've got my questions up, not my bio. Okay, so I'm so excited to introduce you to Nathaniel Wellen. Um, he is the co-inventor of the patented dual handle umbrella called the Duo, which he's going to show to you today. Um, he's also a freshman at Redondo Union High School, and he began his business journey at age seven with an idea for a device that makes sharing an umbrella safe and simple. Um, he actually got his start at the invention convention, and I'm pointing over from this year's Invention Convention participants. Um, and he was so successful that he kept taking his invention higher and higher, um, ultimately advancing to the national competition, where he won most of the region in the country, among 147,000 participants. And he also won second place among all seventh graders in the entire United States, which is pretty impressive. He was also invited to continue on to the Global Invention Convention where he placed in the top one tenth percent of one percent in the entire world. So pretty impressive, Nathaniel. Um, he also partnered with a major company to actually manufacture and distribute his umbrella, which he's going to tell you a little bit about. And perhaps most excitingly, um, in this just this past January, a few months ago, he actually appeared on ABC's Shark Tank. Has anyone seen that show before? We got some Shark Tank fans in the audience. Okay, um, he actually pitched his idea to the Sharks, and he actually came away with a deal uh, with the Shark Robert Kurjavec. So we're gonna hear a little bit about that today. So it's fair to say he's had a few exciting years, and we're gonna we're here today to be inspired by him and learn from him. Nathaniel, come on up. Let's give him a big round of applause. Okay, and before we get started, I'm gonna have Nathaniel show you his umbrella, and you can kind of describe the features. Does that sound good? And I'll hold the mic for you, okay? All right, here, here he is. So this is just a pro, oh, yeah, we should, we should share the umbrella. Okay, okay, I got it, thank you. Okay, yeah, anybody can do it. So you pull the strap, and then you hold it back a little, because I don't want you to get hit in the face, you press that button, and it'll open. Okay, so this is a 3D printed model. This is not the production model. We are coming out with one that will lock into place when you pull down the second handle. We'll have another button that holds it down. It'll be nicer materials. Everything will be more solid. We're offering it in the color of retro blue, which is like a light sky blue. We have midnight, uh, which is a black color, and then stone, which is like a light slate gray. So, you hold the umbrella over both of us. Yep, we're putting it to the test. Okay, so I'm going to hold this one. Okay, I'll pull down the second handle, and then it would lock into place, but since this is just a model, we're going to show how it's done. And then, when we walk into any other, we're both supported under the duo. So, that's the world's first dual handle umbrella. Yeah. Yeah, it's all from a 3D printer. Okay, friends. I don't know. I know some of you have 3D printers. You should be making umbrellas. You guys can do all this stuff at home. Okay, friends. Can you hear us okay? Can you hear Nathaniel? Okay, so maybe hold the mic a little closer too. I know it's a little tough because we got the wind. It's like all happening. Okay. Friends, I actually have some questions for Nathaniel, but I feel like you guys maybe have better questions than I have. Is there anyone who has a question right now they want to ask Nathaniel, and then then we'll get started. Why don't you come on up? take to build it. So do you mean like the prototype, the initial version? The one that, okay, the prototype. Yeah, and then we well, can talk about the... 
Okay, so the prototype originally took hours, um, including shopping for selfie sticks um, that my dad and I would uh, drill into umbrellas. So we took selfie sticks and we jammed them up the umbrellas and we sliced off the top for the phone. And gorilla taped them in there so they would stick and when you pulled it down, that was the original duo prototype and it worked. So we haven't stopped. Um, uh, working on it and rebuilding it since then. We've got help from our shark friend Robert and our partners at Shed Rain. Um, so now the model that we're coming out with now, uh, I believe this is the right statistic. They can uh, create 150,000 umbrellas a day Shed Rain um, in, a, in their factories. So we can to create a duo now um, in a matter of seconds. So I think that's uh, really something to, that I'm proud that we all did together. Um, and I'm so happy that we brought it to market. I actually have a related question that was over there in the question job. And one of our students, they didn't say their name, so I can't give them credit, but they said, do you create a prototype before production? And I thought that was a great question, so maybe some friends don't know about that. Yeah, so a prototype is a first model of whatever you're building, whether that's an app or a product. A prototype is your okay. first version. It's very raw, it's very simple. You can make it out of stuff at home even, and I think that's what a lot of people like to do, especially that's what I did at an event convention, and I think that's how really everything should start, just a rough prototype. Um, so yeah, that was a selfie stick model. Um, and the one time that we tried it in the rain, it worked until we got home and it, I assume it fell apart because it's just gorilla tape and, and some selfie sticks in an umbrella. Uh, but it's always smart to make a prototype. And I encourage you guys, if you have an idea and you really you really think you can help people, you really get behind your own, you're like, oh man, I really think I can reach an audience here. I think I could be really helping a genuine amount of people. Why not make a prototype? Let's test it out. Let's see if it works, right? There's no harm in that. Fantastic. Um, okay, I see a question from Abby. You want to come on up, ask your question, and then I want to ask you all about Shark Tank. I need to hear all about it. So that's that's coming next. So, all right, Abby, what do you got? What first sparked your idea to make the um, umbrella? Okay. Um, Fantastic question. Um, that's a great question. So it was a rainy day in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it pours cats and dogs there. So I was walking to school with my dad. We had an umbrella just in case it rained, but it was tiny. It was one of the compact ones, so it didn't open very big. And when it started pouring on our walk to school, all my stuff got wet, my dad got wet. I did. We couldn't hold the umbrella and stay stay and dry and get to school all in one piece. Everything in my backpack got soaked, including my PB&J sandwich for lunch and all my papers. And neither of us were comfortable, dry, or safe. There had to be a way to fix that. I thought, what if there was a second handle on an umbrella? What if there was something for me to hold? And I told my dad, I was like, oh, I pitched him the idea. I'm like, oh, what about a dual handle umbrella? And he loved it, um, especially just coming up with stuff at a young age, which you guys do all the time, you're so creative. Um, so there's, there's really room for all of you guys to really grow here. Just, if you have an idea, again, I, I really like to push that. If you have something you feel passionate about, it, there's absolutely no reason not to try. Um, you're gonna face challenges, you're gonna face a lot of hardship, but just really go for it. Nothing's stopping you. Um, but that's that's one of my favorite things to tell people. Just you just gotta ask yourself the question: Who is this gonna help? Is it enough people? And am I? Do I have the passion to work behind this? And if you if you're able to answer all three of those questions, you have the passion. You got all the tools you need. That was awesome. I'm feeling inspired over here. Um, okay, we're going to segue to talk about Shark Tank. I see you ladies, and we'll get to your questions, I promise. Okay, so Shark Tank is a show where there is these sharks. That's another word for like an investor, right? So they want to um, use their money that they have and invest in companies that are starting up. Ultimately, they want to make money, right? Sometimes they invest in people they believe in, but usually, yeah, they want to. They want you to be successful and profitable. So you went on this show. 
okay? You were on national television, you came out with a deal. Um, can you talk to these students about what was it like preparing your pitch to be on that show? What was it like getting ready? You shared a little bit with our earlier audience, but maybe, maybe share a little bit more with this group um, about that experience. Well, I, I can't begin to tell you how much work it took. It was hours, weeks, months of time preparing that pitch. It started at seven or eight minutes. We had to narrow it down to about a minute and a half. Every word exactly on cue. Um, we had props involved. It was, we had a raining... Um, uh, model going on where my sister and I uh, danced under the umbrella and tried to stay dry while my mom was pouring uh, <laughs> hose on us above the show like it was raining. That was genuinely the hardest thing I've ever done. And it took so much time, so much work, and I didn't even realize how much it was going to take out of me, but I am glad for every second of it. With my dad, who's been here all along, he's right there in the audience, um, major in nomination for him, he's the best, um, and he's helped me through everything, he's been there from day one, and the rest of my family in Shed Rain, um, we really had support through this whole thing, which is another thing you need to keep going, doing more. But, it was grueling getting on that show. It was so difficult. And there were so many stages where I thought it could be over. And they always tell you, oh, there's no promises it's going to air. Oh, you can't tell anybody that you've ever been on the show if it doesn't air. And at this point, oh, no, you can't tell anybody that you're even trying out for it. I mean, it was such a hard secret to keep. It was so many hours training and improvising the script and working on it. And it's changed so much from now to then, but I think I have too. I've really changed a lot, and I am I like who I'm becoming, um, and I like that I'm learning more about business. That's so cool. Okay, I have to ask you, did you did you think you were gonna get a deal, or were you like, not getting a deal? You thought you'd get a deal. Like, what, where, what, did you, what did you think? <laughs> I, I went in there, so scared, trembling. Um, I was, I was more concerned about getting out alive. Um, that was the scariest thing I've ever done. I mean, I could have humiliated myself in front of everybody on live television forever. So that's my reputation ruined if I screw it up at age 15. You know, say the wrong thing and look too stupid. Um, but when I started. Pitches, and I saw some of the shark's eyes light up. I got more comfortable, and it, w it started getting into more of a negotiation than me just reading off basically what my script was. Uh, and for me, that was that was really the turning point um, of the whole thing. So when when I saw the sharks drop me out even two, I got concerned. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to make it through this thing, it's going to work, deal or not, which I didn't think I was going to get now that I think about it. Um, I'm going to, I'm trying out for Shark Tank, got to give it my all. I was impressed that you negotiated, so I know a lot of adults who don't like to, so I was very impressed by that. Um, okay, so let's ask some questions. Do you, you want to come up as well? Shark Tank, did like everybody at your school go crazy? Gosh, what we all want to know. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Um, I was I was very happy with the turnout. I was worried people would resent me for it. I'd just become the Shark Tank kid. But I was um, I was overwhelmed with all the support that I got from friends and from people that I didn't know. And there, are, you know, I still get high fives in the hallways to this day. Um, people just saying good work. Oh man, I saw you. You're cool on Shark Tank. So, I mean, that's the best feeling in the world to, do, to get so much support from people you don't even know. Um, but even if that didn't happen, I don't think I would have. 
hockey are. Um, because in the end, it's about what you accomplish. And if, you, if you're proud of yourself and you get it all done, at the end of the day, it's you. And whatever you did has to be impressive because if people are gonna resent you for that, it means you must have done it right. Um, okay, you have a question? All right. So, what were some of the challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them? So, Emily asked, what are some of the challenges? Because, you, yeah, you had some challenges and how did you overcome them? Man, it's, it's a lot of challenges being an entrepreneur. Uh, more than I thought I'd ever run into. I run into something every single day. And the truth is, something always goes wrong. Um, but you can't control it. And you need the support of a team. You need the support of your family. You need your own passion. And if you have the three of those things, you combine passion, teamwork, and support. You can get by everything. I mean, from building the prototypes and the falling apart, and then worrying about people hating me for being on Shark Tank, or not wanting to do all the work to get into the entrepreneurs and ending up building for it. Or auditioning for Shark Tank and wor getting worried about getting let down at any stage. Facing okay. issues manufacturing the product or improving it. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. And I was genuinely um, worried that this thing could fall apart at any stage. Um, but with a great team, you gotta build a great team. You can't do anything on your own, you need a team. Passion. You need passion. That's your only fuel that you got. You don't believe what you're working for. There's no point, right? You gotta be, you gotta be happy about what you're doing. You gotta, you gotta feel like, oh, this is something that's gotta work. And then you gotta have support. I mean, from your family, from your friends. Those three things come on. I think you can really achieve anything. Thank you. Okay, I see a question. Nora, would you like to come and ask? And then we've got another one in the front here. Who is the strictest or scariest shark? <laughs> I think that's the most fun question of the day. Um, Mr. Wonderful terrified me. That, that, yeah, he, I mean, one line, he said to me, he said to me, oh, I need to be able to call my CEO 24 hours of the day. Since you're a kid and you're going to be in school, I'm out. And so he cut me out immediately and I was like, oh, I didn't know what to do. I mean, if he's going to drop out that easily, how am I going to be able to grab any of the other ones? I didn't even get to speak. So, he was terrifying. Um, I mean, he looks at you and he's, he's all like this, right? He's all like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy you. I'm gonna rip you to pieces. He's a sweetheart, I'm just joking around. He's an awesome guy. I, I actually met him again when, uh, uh, when I was at the high school, when he came to the high school. He's such a nice guy. Um, and he's, he's really just a good person overall. He's really invested in everybody that he invests in. And not every product is for everyone. So I'm, I'm realizing that now after being on the show. But all the sharks are really great, right? They're, they're, they're all themselves and they're all genuine about everything. And they don't care what other people think. I mean, they are their true selves and they invest in you depending on what they really think and what they think is fair. And it's a real negotiation. It, it takes a lot being up there um, because, you know, they call them sharks for a reason. They're vicious. Um, but you really have to um, just accept them for what they are and it's because they're the best investors in the world. I think that's good advice. You didn't let it rattle you. You just kept going even though he dropped out right away. Um, you had a question? Come on up. What were your emotions and the breakdown of it when you got the deal, and how much was the deal? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's great. So what was going through my head? I mean, before getting the deal, 
I was shaking. I was so scared. I'd never been so scared in my life. Um, right, because again, I'm up there in front of everybody that I've ever known. This is going to be on live TV. And um, I can't screw this up. This is my one big chance. And when they all started dropping out, I, I think I lost four of them, or three of them, and then I got an offer, and then the fourth one dropped out. Um, I'm still shaking. I mean, I'm like, okay, we're almost at the end of this. Let's not screw it up now. So I was, I was overwhelmed. I'm like, oh, man, I got to negotiate now. And so that, that was also the scary part, right, because you don't want to argue with these big, big players. Uh, when I negotiated, I was able to talk Robert down to 18% instead of 20. Um, we were asking for $100,000 for 10% of the company, which means we were valuing ourselves at a million dollars when coming in. Uh, the deal I ended up getting was 18% for $100,000. So after that, I was so psyched. Um, I mean, I, again, I was overwhelmed. I didn't know what to think at the moment. I was just shocked. Um, so in that moment, I was frozen. I was energetic. I was um, over the moon. And I could not wait anymore to see what happens next in the future. So uh, to, the, to this day, I'm the same. Um, so I can't wait to see what we do next. Okay, did you, I, I, I always wondered this from the show. So do you get to, do you get a chance to take a time out and go talk to someone? Like, you know, could you go talk to your parents about the percentages or did you just have to respond on the spot to, to that negotiation process? Totally, so on the show, you can take um, a break and you can step out and you can talk. But as we've watched the show in the past, that can either go great or that can go bad because when you step out and you talk with people, the sharks talk, and they'll either come up with a reason why not to invest in you, or they'll be fine, and you can figure out something with your parents. And we didn't want to take that risk, and my parents in Shed Rain believed in me enough that I could uh, negotiate the right amount. We decided on what I could, what numbers I could go over or under. I think 32 point something percent was or 32 percent was my maximum that i would that i would could have given away to stay in control of the company and have the most equity so uh after negotiating a little i really decided uh to make the deal with robert and it was a great deal he he made a great deal with us so i'm really glad that uh that we're partnering with him now he's the best shark i could have asked for He's one of my favorites on the show, too. Um, okay, do we have any other burning questions from the audience? Um, it's fantastic. Well, we should tell everybody, if someone wants an umbrella, can you tell them how they might get their hands on one? Thank you. You can get the Duo at theduo.com or shedrain.com. We'll be on Amazon, too, soon. We're shipping soon, right before the summer, so get them quick. Thank you. Say thank you. Nathaniel, on behalf of Washington, our community here, first of all, we are so impressed by you, so proud of you as part of our community. Thanks to your dad and your parents for getting you here today and just wishing you all the best of luck in the future. And I got to get my hands on one of these umbrellas. All right, take care. We're the last one standing.